Another really common thing that people want you to build as bounties is a content generation system using an AI LLM. This is remarkably simple and depending upon what they want, might be fewer lines of code than you actually think. Let's take a look at how we can achieve that. Now we're going to build this once again in pure Python. Just to give you an idea about how this is all going to work, we're going to take a bit of Langchain and in fact, we're probably going to steal most of the code we built to train our model last time and repurpose it. Because once you've got a generic purpose program working like this, you can repurpose it as much as you like to produce content generation. What you need to do is start tweaking the prompt, the data set and the output. So the first thing I've done is forked my project from last time. Remembering we don't get secrets coming across, so we need to re-add those. With that in, you'll probably find you can click run and your program goes out to ask a question again. The issue is that it's trained on something completely irrelevant to us. So we need to think about what content we're trying to generate. Now, the absolute classic example of this is the GPT Times, which generates summary articles from Twitter in the style of the New York Times. So we're going to attempt to do something very, very similar. We're going to attempt to generate BBC style articles because, you know, British, British Broadcasting Corporation, based on a prompt we give it. Let's start with the training system. Now you remember that we broke off our training system into its own little subroutine. So I'm going to do the same thing here for the prompting system. And I'm going to call the training function and give it some data. And there's not a lot you need to do differently here. It's an open air embed, it's all working the same way. All we need to do is change out that training data. So I'm going to delete the training data we've already got in there and I'm going to add to it a bunch of BBC News articles. Now thankfully the BBC being funded by the license fee means that as a UK resident I can download thousands of articles from the BBC very very quickly. Let's bring in a tech folder and we're going to bring in, just for this example, I'm going to bring in 50 different articles from the BBC News website in the tech category. Now with that all being updated, I'm going to run it and train it on all those different files. Now remember this took a while when we did the UK employment law, it's probably going to take a while here as well to store all that information in a sensible way. In fact, actually, this data set is one tenth of the size of those two UK employment law articles we looked at in the last video. So hopefully it should take one tenth of the time. Oh, did it work? Unbelievable. So we can't just click run though, get rid of train, reactivate run prompt, and expect much out of it. Because if we do, it's just using random generic knowledge to answer. Let's have a look at what we need to change. First of all is the master prompt. Now I'm gonna change the temperature a little bit to 0.5 to allow a little bit of hallucination. Let's base it on this tweet and see how we go with it. But this isn't great. It's not really looking at what we want to. It's not really producing a story of any kind. And the reason for that is even if we set up our basic prompt, the question that we're sending each time is just the contents of the tweet. So what we've got to do is use an F string to construct a similar prompt, but using the F string. This prompt now tells it explicitly what it wants us to do. And if we send that off, well, there we go. We're getting our BBC style story. So content generation really isn't that difficult. You just need to remember to prompt the LLM as much as possible and remind it what it should be doing. History isn't quite as important in an LLM like this, but it's useful if you're sending multiple parts and it's worth sending just to give it some context anyway. Now in the project that we're modeling this off, they also wanted an image generated from the contents of the text. Now, there's a couple of ways we could do this. We could send another prompt to the LLM to get a summary of the story in a shorter amount of words so we can send it to Dali. Or we could just send the original tweet content to Dali. And why don't we do that? Now, the Dali API is really, really easy to use. Really, really simple. Much more simple than the text-based AI systems we've got, but it is much more expensive to run. I've set the image size here to 256 by 256 to save money whilst testing. Once this is all working, I'll push that size up to something a bit more useful on the modern web. But there we go. It not only generates a story now, an accompanying image. 
And of course, what you might want to do is put that in a database maybe, and then take it into your front end and display it in the style of the BBC News website. We built GPTBC. That doesn't make a lot of sense. GPT times is much more fun. <laughs> take a look at that if you want an example of one that works really, really well. But now you've got a basic understanding of content generation and you can use that and you can use those principles certainly to define that out in any language or for any project you could possibly need.